representative from Defense Services Medical Academy, which will be presenting on a glimpse at judicious approach towards pharmacogenomics activity in Myanmar. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to welcome Dr. Tin Mong Hale. Good morning, everyone. Greetings from Myanmar. I'm honored to attend this ninth CFAM meeting to present you a glimpse at judicious approach towards pharmacogenomics activities in Myanmar. My presentation will start with introduction, followed by current situation in Myanmar, involvement of Myanmar in pharmacogenomic research project, status in 100 pharmacogenes project, future plan and collaborations. Let me begin with the introduction. I'd like to start introducing myself and my former department. After my medical graduation in 1984, I joined the military medical corps and specialized in preventive and tropical medicine. I got to have chances for further study under WHO at ASEAN Institute for Health Development, Mahidon University in Salaya, and under WHO GDR at the University of Philippines, Manila, to pursue Doctor of Public Health in Epidemiology. As I belong to military, my research areas were mainly in infectious illnesses prevalent in the country to provide best prevention and treatment services. Mostly I got myself involved in malaria research. After serving in the military hospital and field operation, I was posted at the headquarter of medical corps responsible for medical research division. Finally, in 2011, I was appointed as commandant at the rank of Brigadier General to establish the Defense Services Medical Research Center, in short, it is called DSMRC, from the scratch, which was first of its kind in the Myanmar military. While erecting the buildings, I plan ahead with a fistful of core staff. I pick molecular study to be implemented first. Accordingly, in 2014, we ran next-generation genome sequencing successfully using Roche 454 Life Sciences genome sequencer for the first time in the entire country. This is a historic picture of us running the sequencer. It was a breakthrough in Myanmar military history for phasing out the time-honored anti-malaria drop used as prophylaxis after confirming the demonstration of gene mutation with resistance. This is a heat map showing plasmodium falciparum gene mutation. Now the DSMRC is going on with my seek from Illumina for further genome study. My connections as well as through my friends network. I studied international collaboration on infectious diseases with one of the renowned scientists from Ziraj Hospital. Then I move on working with one of the leading researcher on myeloidosis from University of South Alabama and Dr. Narisara from TropMed, followed by exchange of our visit to each other department. One time at our meeting, Dr. Narisara asked me if I was interested in pharmacogenomic studies. I said, yes. Then she introduced me to Dr. Watson, a better half of her, and a world-class scientist. This is the beginning of how I actually, not I, not I, my department gets into Dr. Watson network. Thank you again, Dr. Watson, for being so receptive. When I look at the pharmacogenomics, it wasn't my strong suit, but I was intrigued by the nature of the study 
and foreseeing the future medical practice. It is a must to carry along with us in providing best healthcare services to the people we care. Recognizing the fact that there is no one-size-fits-all approach in clinical medicine leading to a success, we need tailor-made practice based on individual requirement. As such, I mobilized my staff to jump into this area of research. Now, I wish to give you the situation analysis relevant to the potential of pharmacogenomics in Myanmar. Out of conversation with Dr. Wilson, there was a question of leading scientists for the field. In our premises, pharmacology and biochemistry are different departments and diverse interests. For medical practice in both public and private sectors, pharmacologists doesn't play much. Likewise, biochemists conduct some of the laboratory tests and few of molecular tests. Bioinformatics has yet to be developed more. Medical research activities are mostly government related and only a few private academic and non-governmental organizations are able to conduct research. Pharmacogenomic studies were hardly seen, but next generation genome sequencing is available in both civilian and military research facilities. At the academic front, both pharmacology and biochemistry departments play important role in graduate and postgraduate training with decent common laboratories. Lastly, as you can see, the capacity in military medical corps is promising. That is a medical research center with facilities of genomic study and biosafety level 3 laboratories. That has achieved its pinnacle of research activities since 2014. Looking at the current battle with COVID-19, staff from DSMRC who have been trained for molecular study are now instrumental and spread out to different locations to run RT-PCR for COVID-19 testing. Medical Academy has produced sizable number of medical doctors trained at tertiary and teaching hospital, conferring bachelor, master and PhD degrees. Coverage of country's area by medical corps is around 70%, as wherever there is a military unit, a medical platoon is there. Thus, for any research to cover area, as well as to cover diverse people, military medical research team always bear good position to join any program. Drawing conclusion out of such situations and judging the potential, I place DSMRC appropriately to play a leading role in Dr. Watson's project to represent Myanmar. Then the real day came to us to start the study. Realizing the value of pharmacogenomics, particularly in reducing unnecessary healthcare costs caused by inefficient and inappropriate medication, making this possible by maximizing the effective effectiveness of drugs and minimizing the adverse effects. We submitted the research proposal to obtain both technical and ethics approval to go forward. We recruited research participants accordingly. Having done with the material transfer agreement with Dr. Watson, we dispatched the samples to Bangkok. It was smoothly carried out as we had trainees there in Bangkok. These are the areas we had discussed with Dr. Watson, which I won't go into details. Not only myself, my colleagues and staff found exciting to have a ride on this project. We contributed information to set the bottom line of pharmacogenomics in the participating countries. It was very useful that we could pick the area to develop to keep abreast with other participating countries. 
We are still lacking in laboratory for pharmacogenomics research, economic research, and laboratory for clinical pharmacogenomics services. What we need were spelled out in the slides. These are the slides showing our involvement in the pharmacogenomic studies. We found limitation in technical human resources and IT facilities. When we had results from Dr. Watson, it took forever to download the files because of the location of DSMRC, where data signal was not strong and satisfactory. The staff assigned for the result interpretation also required further training to handle the task intellectually, among which I retire and some of the key players move out to other departments in the different region for their career advancement. Important part is coming now. What is to be done to meet our objectives in future? I invited Dr. Wilson to Myanmar Military Medical Conference in February 2019. As I was getting retired so that Dr. Wilson got acquainted with those scientists who remain in the service to continue working with. Luckily, we don't need to reinvent the wheel, but feasible and simple way to revive the existing collaboration should be in place. Let me flash you with a slide of future plan, which is not yet exhaustively formulated. Closer encouragement is highly recommended between parties involved. As much the situation allows, it can be in person or virtual. Consideration should be made on the short-term and long-term planning. Non-degree or skill and performance enhancing training is to be followed by academic advanced degree program. Most importantly, private sector involvement is to be aimed as well, including but not limited to healthcare and related industries. Aside from thinking, planning and willing, we do need to do and implement everything leaving no stone undone. My previous slide illustrated the potential resources of related fields in Myanmar. At this juncture, what is more needed to be done is to bring them together to establish collective vision and to work for one consolidated goal. For international collaboration, as Dr. Wilson and team play a pivotal role, we are always ready to ride along. I have stated clearly that how my former department, DSMRC, entered into the pharmacogenomics commensurately with given circumstances. Whenever there is a stronger institution or team appears to take over our part in Myanmar, we will be more than happy to continue contributing to the project from the suitable corner with open mind. As Chinese saying goes, one picture can tell 10,000 words. So allow me to display some of the pictures from our archive. This picture marked the attendance of medical doctor from Myanmar representing the SMRC for the first time in 2017. In those days, our departmental policy of 60 days prior notification for international travel made us borrow stuff from another agency to represent us. In the following year, another doctor represented DSMRC to participate at the meeting in Thailand. Like before, we borrow a medical doctor to represent us.
Last year, we received the timely invitation, giving us sufficient time to take office procedure to send a colonel from the SMRC, a senior pathologist who joined the 8C firm meeting in Indonesia. This historic picture was taken when I visited Dr. Wilson Laboratory in Bangkok. And we did have a nice time making lively discussion vis-a-vis. -vis. Finally, Dr. Wilson paid a visit to Myanmar to join 26 Myanmar Military Medical Conference in February last year. And I'm sure that he met quite a number of researchers and scientists so that he could continue working with some of them in the future. This is my new office. I continue my advisory service at Defense Services Medical Academy. Thus, I could contribute some more to those who need it. Before I conclude my presentation, I wish to make my humble request to all of you to welcome someone who succeeds me since I lived my best life while I was in active service, but I am now enjoying my sunset years of life. Taking this opportunity, I'd like to thank the organizing committee to make this meeting happen amidst all the hustle with COVID-19. And I'm grateful to all my collaborators, especially to Dr. Wilson, without whose invitation, the SMRC could never be able to be part of pharmacogenomics project. Thank you so much for your kind audience. Have a wonderful time and keep yourself safe from COVID-19.